This is the old school here at the corner, the original school of Trement. And we'll go across the road here to these steps and that will take us to the outside of the boundary of Trement. And this wall here forms part of the east of the boundary of the original village of Trement. You can see the walls at this stage are at least six feet high or two meters, sometimes rising to more than that. Although there's been quite a lot of infill development in the last 20 or 30 years, you can still work out the distinctive um, walls where they have dog-like shapes. Historically, and because they're such old walls, I'm not old, but because they're such old walls, they're protected. Sometimes they're pierced by doorways so that people would have a shortcut to the church on Sunday. And sometimes they've been replaced entirely in the middle of the 20th century before people were quite so sensitive about such things as medieval walls. This part here has been replaced by a hedge when they built these cohort houses in, I think, the 50s or the 60s. But it still follows the route of the original old walls. So emerging from that hedged area, we come into this cul-de-sac area of Fowler Street, which has opened out a bit, but this is the way we're going to go to continue our walk outside the walls. And here we are back to the original old walls again. The wall to my left is the piece at the bottom of the borough of Wake, which is the, the borough boundary, and the wall going off to the right is one of the rig walls from the traditional rigs of the borough of Trement. Here as well, the wall is pierced by openings at times to allow uh, the burghers, the original burghers who lived in these properties, easy access out the back here and down this back route that we've just come up to get to church on a Sunday. But here again, the wall peters out because of modern development a little bit further up here. Where we have this fence. No. In the area beyond this fence is what would have been the piece of land that belonged to Trinent Tower. Boroughs were very often defined by the church at one end and the, and the castle at the other. We don't have a castle in Trinent, but we do have an old, very ruinous at the moment, tower. And this is part of the land of it. But in the recent years, probably at the end of the 20th century, it's been um, subject to infill development as well. Now this brings us up to Sanders Wind, which leads to one of the new schools of Trenent, but the one in front of us is the old public school, which has been closed for about 10 years now. If we go just a little bit to our right into this housing area here we can see evidence from the back of Trenent Tower you can see it's covered in scaffolding it's very dangerous and it would be very very expensive to replace but it's got a very interesting built-in gukut around the other side of it. 
Now, this old Trenent Infant School would have been built just outside the wall of the borough, and it's that wall where the, where the shelter is over there in the playground, it's the back wall of that. We can't get access to it because the, the site is closed and protected, but we can walk around and join it at the other side. All of these walls, and indeed the town hall and many other buildings in, Trine in Old Trenet would have been built from the quarry at Sanderson Wind, which we just passed. It itself has now been filled in and has a modern housing development on it. But as we go through this next section, you can see the actual boundary wall has been replaced by lots of different materials. And the first one is here, where the new modern library and council offices have been built. And you can see it's been faced in wood. However, a little bit further up, we do rejoin part of the old wall again. And as we walk through this next bit, we'll see many other sub um, materials that have been used in recent times. The boundary is still there and respected, but just sometimes rendered in different materials. Oh, Italy. As you can see, this one has a bit of a brick topping to raise it up a bit from its original level. This one has been rendered with harling, but still has its distinctive capping stones on top. And then a little bit further up here, we get back to the original wall again, at various heights. At the bottom of these borough rigs, very often people would build other buildings, and that may well be the reason why walls are much higher at certain points, because it never was a defensive wall. It was... <laughs> It was really just to delineate the borough of Trenent and people's property. Crossing the road here, we come to one of the latest additions to Trenent's architecture. And this is the new Fraser Centre, built on the site of a former cinema, known locally as the Cuds. And um, it's been built as a community centre, office space. Lots of things happen there normally. But as you can see, it's made of uh, metal here. And in actual fact, parts of it, the boundary is formed with glass. But the glass is a metal covering here. But when there's, uh, when there's something going on in here that's appropriate, they might well have these shutters open. And you can see the glass being used as part of the boundary. Now in this next bit, the road narrows and this is definitely not very suitable for social distancing. So I'm hoping that by coming early on a Sunday morning, I won't upset anybody. It's very narrow at this point with a smaller wall on the other side with 30s buildings beyond it. So it shows how Trenent has grown. This section here takes us along the back of the buildings that are on the high street. And it's known as the back sides. It's always been known as the back sides or the backies. This stage here is escape, an escape route down to the high street, so it's very easy for people to come from the high street and use this back route. But we're going to carry on in this way and hope that it's relatively quiet around the corner.
Now you can see all these different materials being used. Brick, breeze blocks, glass in windows of building at the bottom of the borough rigs. And at this stage we do a very sharp right turn. And that right angle corner can be seen on all of the old maps of Trinent as being the original boundary. Here it's a breeze block, not very attractive, but it serves the purpose. Here you can, here you can see where buildings have been built at the bottom of people's town rigs because of course your house and your rig with it was very often the, the whole working place of a tradesman. Also the place where they would uh, grow their vegetables, perhaps keep a pig or maybe even a cow, but expand their businesses into. So this is why in this particular area there's quite a number of buildings at the bottom which are more industrial buildings. This is where the narrow bit of the back sides stops. And out here we come to Haddington Road. However, the wall would have carried along this line here, which you can normally see when this is working as a garden shed place, you can normally see the wall going along the bottom of this garden shed curtain. But for quite a bit here we can't get access because this is a, a business that um, obviously has security and beyond that is St Martin's Primary School and you can't go walking around in school playgrounds without permission. So we've come out on Haddington Road next to Asda and we're going to walk along this side here to St Martin's Church and School. Here's St Martin's Roman Catholic Church in Trinent and down there is the primary school and at the far side of the building is the wall that would have been the borough boundary wall. Some of the bits of it you can see from the other side but again they're in private gardens because Trinent has expanded beyond it. All these private houses around here would have had the borough boundary at the bottom of their gardens. You can't actually access it from here anymore. This one is Rose Cottage, which at one point was made by the Queen's mother and sisters. We visited here, as well as a few other places in Trinet over the years. I've come down St Martin's Lane to the other side of the primary school. And as you can see, there's new post-war development here. And as far as I can gather, this fence here is about as good, as close to the line of the borough boundary as we can get. And so we have to go back up St Martin's Lane again. As you can see, there are lots more new houses being built in this little quiet corner of Trinent. And this is us at the further extent of Old Trinent.
this would have been the end of the burrow here and the burrow boundary wall is down there at the very end and this is the burrow boundary wall it seems very low at this side but round on the other side where you can just catch glimpses of it amongst the houses it's much higher i think this land must have been built up quite a lot inside here seems very low for a boundary wall but as i said before it wasn't defensive and at the bottom of these gardens where the two swings are you can see the height of the wall from the other side and here we are outside the serenity business center again and this old man manse which is no longer a manse um, was on the outskirts of Trenent. and looking across the road there you can see the old and the new the old on our right the much newer, probably post-war houses in the north and that house there behind the lamp post would have been the last house on the south east of Trenet of the original police borough. So we're going to cross over the road here and follow the route. So here we are walking back in towards the centre of Trenet again and the way that the borough boundary would have gone would have been something like this, going up and round the car park of Asda. Walking along this way. Very kindly given us zebra crossings for this bit. up this little route here, which again is not ideal for social distancing. So to the right of me would have been Old Trenent, to the left New Trenent. And we're walking up Glenny Gardens now to uh, the Ormiston Road. So this is now Loch Road, which would have provided, um, which would have been on the outskirts of Trenent. And that wall over there on the other side of the road would have been part of the borough boundary. And it's here that we begin to lose quite a lot of the actual walls because of modern development. And from here on in, it's a case of spot the pieces of wall that are left because quite a number of them have, uh, have been removed because these ones are not really in the conservation area. Further down near the church, that was a conservation area and so they've been kept. But a lot of them have disappeared here and sometimes there's just a tiny little bit of them left. Such as this little bit, for instance. And this little bit. And that little bit ahead of us, all the bit in between, removed for houses and car park. However, if you can't actually see the bottom of people's rigs, you can see the walls in between the rigs, as here, where the area has been cleared for presumably development, you can see the rig walls on either side. And there are a couple of little pens where you can dive out into the high street again. This one comes out near the building, which has probably still got Mr. Copper written on it. And there's another one, which um, is called Plough Lane, and it comes down the side of the Plough Inn. Loch Road becomes well wind, and this wall here is really all that's left to be seen down here, quite a substantial wall. And then it disappeared from easy access and we may have to go back down to the Civic Square to take a shortcut along to find the next bit. We'll just see how we go. 
it's still here as we go through the potter's path, but it's well hidden behind this vegetation. So we join the wall again here, and we're in luck because the gate's open. So we'll be able to follow the route right along. This gate isn't always open, and sometimes you have to walk uh, along a bit of bridge street before you can come back to the Borough Boundary route. In fact, if you walked along New Road, you'd be able to come up that bit there and rejoin it. So the wall was a lot lower here, and over on this side there would have been fields, basically. This would have been farmland on our left-hand side here. And now it tends to be all built up. But you can still see the old wall from quite a good bit of it going along there. Now at this stage the route takes a dog leg and in order to rejoin it again we're going to have to go down through this parking area between these houses and onto the Elphinstone Road. This area is called Mickey House Drive. The brick wall stops down there, but then there's a complete dead end, more or less in somebody's garden, which at this time of lockdown is not really a good idea. So we've come straight out into Elphinstone Road, and in front of us we've got what would have been the station and the station master's house in the days when the train still came to Trenent. And we're just going to walk round towards the Brig Inn. So all old walls have disappeared around here in the building of these houses and this roundabout. But if we come round here to the Brig Inn and then onwards a bit, we can see the Hugh, which was a railway path. And the Hugh goes down the borough boundary of Trenent. The railway bridge, which gives the Brig Inn its name. The Brig Inn was originally the Railway Tavern. And this route will take us right back down to the Kirk again, back to where we started. On our right hand side here was the Borough Boundary, but you can't see any walls here. It's all covered in vegetation. In any case, there's a great big bank there. Until we come a little bit further down to what is now the Hugh Community Garden. This is in the old days, belters like their shortcuts to get out of the borough and into the countryside. And here's one of the modern ones that's been built. And here we are now walking down towards the community garden. So this is the wall of the Hugh Community Garden, which you can visit on the days when they're working there. In front of it would have been uh, a burn which came down, which still is in periods of heavy rain, you get water coming down in the burn. Inside this area where the community garden is now was actually the, the gasworks. Trenent was a very early adopter of gasworks, and from late in the 19th century, there were gasworks in here. And now it's this lovely community garden where various groups grow along to grow vegetables. And there's a men's shed there, and they've got the pizza oven, so it's very good if you can time your visit with one of their open days, because if you go in there, they're probably going to offer you a piece of pizza. Okay, so continuing on down here. Again, it's just the banking on the side. There'll be small walls at the bottom of the gardens up on our right-hand side there but it wouldn't have needed much more than this because it was such deep banks it was delineated anyway and of course they, they cut coal out of here that's how Trenet started up in the first place the cactus from the modern houses up on this side and here this would have been the railway to press and pans but carrying on down this way by the side of the bun towards the kirk this is a sticking with a cement borough boundary. You can see it's well used. 
So here we are with the manse through the trees up above us and the kirk beyond that. Walking the last section of the borough boundary, which takes us back to where we started at the kirk. Where everything started in Trinent, although you wouldn't think it nowadays because it's very much on the north extremity of Trinent. All the developments happened uh, to the south and a bit to the east and the west on either side of us. But here we have this handsome wall of the manse and of the kirk. Very, very old, but very difficult to date, apart from what we can see on maps. Here's where the bun would have been. You can see it's very, very dry. You can also see that over the church wall, because it's been cleared recently, these steps which lead down to this little bridge and gate at the corner, the north-west corner of the churchyard. And this is all part of the boundary as well. But this gateway, which is now filled in of course, and bridge over the burn, which isn't running at the moment, was so that people from the wider parish of Trement, and it went all the way down to the north of us here, down to Preston Pans and to um, and to Mackenzie and Port Seaton, they would have a little shortcut into the church on a Sunday. Not much of a shortcut when you've already walked two or three miles, but anyway, it's a help. And now at the battle board here, at the crossroads with the Brickworks Road, we're going to walk up the Ducat Bray and that will bring us back to where we started. Here's the Ducat in the trees and quite a precarious set of steps to get to it and quite a precarious building when you get up there because it's got big bulges on the side of the stonework. That is the, the school wall ahead of us, which would have, I guess, been the boundary of the playground for generations of Trinent children, but not anymore. And on the side of us is the retaining wall of the churchyard, which is the borough boundary. The wall from which Jacobite soldiers would have tested their firearms, seeing if they could draw out uh, the government troops, the redcoats. So that's the church wall, this is the school wall, and this is the northmost boundary of Trinent. Possibly also once a shortcut into the school for the kids who came from farms further afield than the actual village or town of Trinent. back to Church Street, originally the main street of Trinent, way before they built the High Street. And back to these steps, which were the shortcut to church.